Hey everybody, welcome back to Decode Tech. Today's video is going to continue our introduction to Python, and today we're going to be introduced to a concept called variables. But first, let's do a little bit of playing around first. And just because I'm on Windows now, uh, your Python stuff in this series will work on either Mac or Windows, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to use Windows for this case because it's easier for me. But in your case, all the code is going to be the same, and if you followed my installation on Windows and Mac, you should be set to go for these tutorials for now. So I'm going to get into the idle program that comes with Python, and I have it pinned here to my taskbar. You might have to search down here if you're on Windows, or open up Terminal on Mac and type in idle3 if you're on Mac. Um, if you're on Windows and you only have Python 3 installed, you can just type idle and it should come right up. So last time we left off with a print hello world statement that looked like this. Now this line is called an instruction. Now in higher level languages, they don't map one instruction to one machine code instruction. Instead, this line of high level language like Python might translate to say five machine code instructions. So that's why you have a little bit of a performance hit when you use a higher level language that's closer to English. But it's also very convenient to write less code. So you have trade-offs you have to work with. But just so you know, this is an instruction of code. And this instruction is executed by the CPU or brains of the computer. If you watch my How a Computer Works series, that'll tell you all about that type of stuff. But now let's try something different. Let's try maybe um, instead of quotes, hello world, let's try maybe some addition. How about 10 plus five? And I'm just gonna hit enter. And you see that, oh, okay, Python can add 10 plus 5, so it can do ar arithmetic. Well, notice I took the quotes away. What if I left the quotes there? So I'm going to type in print again, and I'm going to put quotes 10 plus 5. Oops, I got an error. Now if I run this, you see we get the actual 10 plus 5 written out. So whatever is between the, between the quotes rather will print out. So we got 10 plus 5. But if you leave the quotes off, you get the arithmetic expression 10 plus 5. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's do print 10 without the quotes times 5 because we want the actual arithmetic value, not 10 times 5 written to the screen. And that gives us 50. Okay, so Python can multiply as well. So that's great. So if you saw before, I actually got an error. So I started a new um, Python shell here. But... Um, I want to explain to you how these Python errors work. And so let's try typing something and messing up. So if I type print, don't do parentheses and just do 10 plus 5, you'll see it throws what's called a syntax error. And it says missing parentheses and call to print. Now what is syntax? Syntax is the spelling or grammar of a programming language, put simply. So basically it's saying we miss the parentheses, we miss some syntax. So normally when you get an error, when you write an actual program and aren't just in this interactive shell, it'll give you what's called a trace back and it'll give you some more information on the error. So um, let's try creating a file. I actually already have a file, so I'm gonna open it and it's under my documents under Python tutorials and it's called mistake.py. I'm just gonna open it up and I'm going to run the program. Now notice we got the restart. Remember that means a new program is starting. And you see we get the welcome to Python programming and I hope you enjoy learning print out, which are these two lines here. Now they printed because Python interpreter reads the file top to bottom. So did this one, it worked good. Did this one, it worked good. Got to this line and it failed. So here we see this trace back that I was talking about that it will normally give you. The next line says the file name uh, which gives you the path of the file here, which if you don't know what that is, you can check out my uh, basic Windows series, How to Organize Files, will tell you what a path is, and it tells you the line number that it thinks the mistake is on. Now, it's not always dead on where it's showing the error, but it gives you a good idea of where it is. And then the next line is the bad line of code, and then it shows the type of error it is down here. So this is called a runtime error instead of a syntax error. Because the syntax was correct, just the logic was wrong, it didn't catch it till it ran the program. So up here we had a syntax error where we missed some grammar or um, punctuation. But down here, um, we actually had correct code syntactically, 
but our logic was a little bit off. And so it said cannot concatenate string. And now that's gonna look a little crazy to you right now, but basically what that's saying is, remember what's in quotes is a phrase and a number is a number. It's basically like saying you can't take five alligators and add five apples to it. It just doesn't work. Um, their two types are different. But um, now notice what would work is if we took away the plus and we multiply instead, and I'll save it and I'll go up to run and rerun it, we get the restart again, and here it all prints out good without an error. And notice we get goodbye five times. And why did this work but adding didn't? Well, basically it's like saying you can't add alligators and apples but you can multiply apples. For example, if you have an apple and you want to multiply it by five, you can have five more apples, but you couldn't multiply apples by alligators. That just doesn't work. So it's the same um, idea here. So let's try some more things in the interactive shell. Um, let's clear this one out and open a new one. There's no convenient way to clear a shell, unfortunately, so I'm gonna be closing out and reopening sometimes here. So let's try something else. How about print? two phrases. How about cat plus the phrase dog? Notice it just joins them together. So since these are both phrases, um, the plus operator just smashes them together. Um, this is something fancy called concatenation. Um, I believe it's spelled like concatenation. I think so. I might be wrong on that. But just for now, um, in other words, it means it's not adding them together like it would numbers, which is addition, but instead it's joining them or concatenating them is the big word. We'll get more into that later. Just wanted to make you aware that's why that acts like that. And now notice if I went print quote 55 plus quote five, that'll give us five, 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 five. Why? Because we put the quotes saying, hey, this is a phrase in Python, and we'll learn later that's called a string, and it just concatenates them together because this is not numbers, this is phrases. So it joined the phrase 55 and 5 together, giving us 555 five, five instead of 60. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for now, and we'll get back to that stuff later. Now I'm going to introduce a concept called a variable. So a variable is just a name that you attach to some data. Pretty much all programming languages have variables nowadays, and they're very useful in, and core to programming. So we just give something a name. So let's do sum underscore var, short for variable, and then the assignment operator, which is an equal sign. Now this does not mean equality in Python. We are assigning sum var to some data. We're not saying it equals that data, we're assigning it to it. So for example, let's assign the phrase um, decode. Now, some var is storing the phrase decode. And what do I mean by that? In high level languages, you have these variables, but what's actually happening behind the scenes, and in lower level languages, you probably will have to interact with some of this stuff, but it's assigning data to RAM or to memory. When you load a program, it loads into your computer's RAM, and if you want to store some data to use later in your program, you can assign it to a memory address in RAM. And it might look something like this behind the scenes. So basically, instead of having to remember memory addresses that look like this, higher level languages give you variable names that you can use and it'll automatically assign it to a memory address for you. And then it's much easier as a programmer to remember um, where you had stored different data. So for example, now we can say print some var. Notice I didn't put quotes around this because if I put quotes, that would make it a phrase and that would print out some var. But I want the data that is stored inside the variable some var. So I'm gonna hit enter and you see decode prints out. So if I would have instead put quotes around it, it would print out some var and that's not what we wanted. So we just call the name of the variable. Now this data acts the same as the other data act in Python. For example, if I do print some var, which is storing a phrase or a string and do plus five, it's going to fail because they're two different types. But if I did print 
some var plus the string of five, it'll concatenate or join them together to get decode five. Because they're both strings, they can both be joined together. Now notice if you spell the variable name wrong, it'll give you an error. So if I say print sum car, it'll say give me a trace back. Um, normally it gives you a file name, but since we're in the shell, it just gives us a shell number, tells us the line it's on, and it gives us the bad line of code and it says name some car, to, some car is not defined. What that means is we did not assign a variable some car to any data. And so um, if we now instead fix that error, we'll be fine. Or we could make a new variable called some car and put car in here. Now car is defined and we can print some car without that error. But it's not uncommon to misspell your variable names and get a name error. Now you can store more than just phrases or strings in variables. You can store numbers as well. So let's do sum underscore num gets five. And once again, the data acts the same. It just has a name placed on it so you can use it over and over again in your computer or in your programming file. So if I do print sum num, I can still add a number to it and it'll add whatever is stored in some num plus the new value. So once again, a variable is just a name that you assign some data to with the equal sign or the assignment operator as it's otherwise known in Python. And there are some rules about variables and there are many other things you can do with them. And it doesn't look very useful in this setting in the interactive shell, but in an actual programming file, it can become very useful. So I'll explain more on that and how they work, but for now this has been an introduction to variables and what they are. They are a name tied to data and storing it in memory or RAM so you can access it later. And if you follow along this tutorial series, the next video will probably be more on variables. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to help you out. And if you liked the video, found it informative, please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already and share it with anybody that you might think would enjoy this type of content. So we hope to see you all in the next video.